Caddis Maximus here, this time with a teardown of one of these uh, Harbor Freight Earthquake 70 foot pound impacting reactionless air ratchets. These are the type of air ratchets that have, as they sound inside here, they have a tiny little impact wrench mechanism. And the reason for that is air ratchets are like traditional corded drills. They don't have any type of clutches in them. And especially with premium brands, uh, they can have it's quite a bit of power. And the big issue with that is because it's torquing itself back and forth. So if you're trying to break a fastener and you don't manually break it first and you just hit the the throttle, it can smash your knuckles into something. It's, I'm sure many people who may watch this video have experienced more than once of having their knuckles getting racked using an air ratchet or even in a situation where they're trying to run in a larger fastener that it will stop and then boom, rack their knuckles the other direction. So the whole solution was adding an impact wrench. They don't seem to deliver quite the same as just a straight impact wrench because it's an impact wrench mechanism that is then going through an air ratchet mechanism that seems to sap quite a bit of power. The other issues is obviously they are more expensive, they're large, and they're much heavier than traditional air ratchets. So that's why you don't see them super often. The this 3 8 unit is the only one Harbor Freight's ever had. Uh, other manufacturers make them in the common sizes quarter inch, three eighths and half inch, but they're just not a big sale item because of the cost and the aforementioned issues, size and weight, but they can be advantageous. Uh, although it doesn't seem like it, and I don't have a standard one to real, uh, well, actually I did, but I didn't do the, uh, comparison because of the nature of the impact mechanism. These tend to operate at a much faster speed, so they can be pretty quick. Anyway, let me cut to that, and we'll just do a quick demonstration of it operating, and then we'll tear it down. So as a quick example, this is how these ratchets really are intended to work, is just to make it a little safer as you operate. Oh, I've got to get this in the correct direction. As you can see, I'm not torquing around or anything. It's just like an impact wrench just attached to a ratchet head. Except where they don't seem to deliver quite as much power because you just have all this mechanism ahead of the actual impacting portion. But they really can save your knuckles in just so many situations uh, just because you're not dealing with static torque. And that's always been the issue with big air ratchets is that they're just fixed. They're just like a regular drill and if the fastener is stuck the thing swings around if you're not ready for it and smashes your hand but man they are they do also operate really fast at least decently fast all right we're back here let's go ahead and tear this thing down got a little demonstration of how this thing worked i think when i originally reviewed these this tool i never actually even gave a remote demonstration which was uh just part of my early channel anyway i'm gonna start by taking apart the head that way it'll actually be easier to disassemble this portion from the impact portion so you have two threaded uh, areas here usually on air ratchets just a head threaded right under the air motor but here we have an intermediate collar which is going to hold the gear reduction unit and the impact unit so here we're going di to disassemble a kind of reverse operation take apart the whole uh, head assembly that way we can get a bar through the fork here you don't want to put it through the eyes we're going to put it through the fork and then hold on to this knot and then disassemble the impact mechanism and then finally remove the knot and take apart the air motor let's one thing that is also interesting about these impacting air ratchets is they tend to have this push button lock uh, reverse switch because they do kind of want to self reverse just due to the impacting mechanism. Of course, we'll just have a snap ring here. These things are pretty easy to take apart. Although the, you want to be careful of the springs that are inside the ratchet mechanisms on air ratchets because they are truly heavy duty. I mean, a lot of people talk about the strength of ratchet mechanisms on manual hand ratchets. Think of any. Think if you had a manual ratchet that had the same type of, come on, get out of there, that had as heavy a duty mechanism as what one of these air wrenches has. It would be pretty darn heavy duty. This thing is kind of getting stuck on me here. There we go. Wow, there's actually a bit of spring. Oh, it's from the switch itself. So we have a collar here. If I can 
get the little collar out. There's our primary collar or the support collar. We have a couple little ball bearings in there. I'm not quite sure what those are for yet, but we'll try to get this thing apart here. Okay, the trick to that was is that you actually have to take the reverse switch and put it in right in the middle so they'll retract these paws. What's interesting is it's not like a pair head ratchet, but these are built just like a round head ratchet. But in this situation, it's actually the round head itself. If we can get this thing to want to get out of here. These are always sometimes, I shouldn't say always, it's just been a little while. The little mechanism you have to, may have to twist around so you can get the actual anvil itself out and this is one of the this is the little ball that's actually moving back and forth it's actually hooked in there so it actually moves side to side as well as back and forth because it's connected to a little spindle that's going around like a crankshaft and so if it's pushed off to the side this will get jammed inside the head you don't want to lose these parts that is something that you'll want to grease or oftentimes lube Many people will put lube into the back end of an air ratchet, but they'll kind of forget that you really need to more so lube this whole mechanism up here. Secondly, when you put lube into the air motor, into the inlet, it goes through the air motor and then back out the exhaust, and it never reaches this portion. This is actually a little oil fill. That's a little tiny ball detent, or not detent, but just a little ball valve, and you can get special oilers, or you can just use like a little needle to push that down and put some drops of oil in there, the oil the impact mechanism itself. The next thing you'll want to do on many air ratchets, this the actual crankshaft is all splined, but you pull it out through the top of the ratchet itself. On a few obscure units, you actually have to pull the head off and this stays in there, but most situations you can see it has cutouts on both sides, that way it can slip through uh, the fork here. What I also find a little bit interesting is that these two balls are spring-loaded, but they're not detents. They're just uh, preload to make sure that this sits flush against what would be equivalent to the top side of the ratchet fork. There is a second support ring, and all this essentially goes together in only one direction, so you can't really mess it up. And this thing doesn't really matter which way it's in there. But we can certainly see that this is surprisingly enough uh, not a fine tooth ratchet because they really need the thick coarse ratchet teeth and we can see just how large those things are. I'm going to have to figure out I put this in the vise and then loosen this but now both are loose. I'm not entirely sure how this is all supposed to really go together. I probably should have looked at the parts breakdown but what's the fun of looking at a parts breakdown when you're doing something like this? Quite a bit of threads on there. Here we are and that's just the collar. We can see dual needle bearings, so that's actually pretty nice. Using needle bearings in there for this shaft to try to make it deliver power a little bit more efficiently. Many air ratchets will just use sleeve bearings in there. It's kind of interesting. This is like some type of lock collar, and it's pretty lightweight. It almost feels like it's aluminum. And now we can see we still have a couple of flaps on this portion that actually unscrew what is containing the impact wrench mechanism. Of course, something that's confusing me is here's our oil filler and we can just see the nub right over there inside and it just puts oil in this outer housing a little bit will get into that bearing but then there's just a couple of holes here and here on this unit but the oil doesn't really i mean it kind of seeps in but it's a really indirect method i'm actually kind of surprised about that let's go ahead and try to get this portion loosened surprisingly enough this thing was uh 29 millimeters kind of an odd size there's just a little bit of light thread locker on there you know a real light type of adhesive kind of wondering how there I'm just gonna hold it all together and hopefully it kind of stays together it does a little bit we do have a pressed in steel bushing at the end of this to support the unit <clears throat> we can also see now a radial needle bearing so that's going to be part of what's supporting the front end of the whole impact mechanism. We do also have a spring in there. I think that's what's keeping it aligned or pushing it. I'm not exactly sure how to explain how pin drive impact wrenches work. There's a video by Sue and I was re-watching it and I think I got a little too confused. 
Okay, I think I got it figured out. It's the most important part of the video uh, is how this little impact mechanism works. And it's really weird. It's kind of like the inverse where the... Uh, on most impact wrenches, the big weight... And in this situation, the big weight is also doing delivering the impact force. But this is kind of internalized versus externalized. There's a big spring here, which kind of... Whole, which is providing tension, pushing this thing up and uh, taking up thrust the whole time. The actual air motor is splined and is driving this outer housing. This shaft here just goes all the way through and floats, doesn't even engage that. It engages this inner portion, which spins. And I'll show what's inside here in a second. But what ends up happening is that it spins around and then inside there's a little bump and if the anvil can't turn it will lift it up and when it lifts it up that's when it delivers the impact to the side of these pins and then the pins just transfer the energy to those two holes and how it does that lifting up portion is actually surprisingly simple the two pins are literally just like two little needle bearing pins that's just all they are is just super duty metal rods because they're taking impacts. We have the anvil, which looks like it is in many impact wrenches, except for it's it's hitting against the sides of pins instead of directly against the hammer. And let me get a little flashlight here. And since I don't have three hands, this could be a little bit difficult, but there's a ball bearing in there. You can see that there's a little trough that's been machined out. You can see that there's just a machined out circle, but on the side of the circle, it's actually been cut just a little bit deeper. So that ball bearing can only roll back and forth, you know, maybe 30 or 40 degrees. That just provides a little bit of backlash. And on the back of the anvil, there's this little step. So as it's riding in there, when it stops, this hits the back of that ball, lifting up the anvil, and thus delivering the impact energy to the pins. And of course, the real big secret is how does it intermittently do that? If we look at the anvil, when it's in the retracted position, we can see that it's just even with the bottom of the cutouts of the pins. So this won't actually touch the, the pins until it gets lifted up. So it lifts it up, this swings around, gives it an impact, and it will retract actually back down. That's what that spring right there is for, is to push it down rather than to essentially lift it up and other impact mechanisms. So it's pretty neat. It's a little complicated little mechanism uh, just for something s seemingly so simple like an impact. And it is pretty neat that they can make them so small like this. This is also a big, I'm not exactly sure, but there's a certain reason why uh, there are different impact mechanisms depending on speed and the amount of torque you're driving with them and their the physical size. Different impact wrench mechanisms are used in different situations and it's really kind of surprising it really is just this you know tiny little package that is an entire impact wrench right there pretty darn cool and now we know also that this has five rolling bearings we have one needle thrust bearing two needle bearings in the support of the neck and then there's going to be a couple of additional bearings one on each side of the little air motor itself which actually feels pretty tight and Oh, we can just yank that right out. We've got a little ring right there. We'll make sure that goes in the correct direction. Wow, that actually just glides right off. It's actually a pretty nice seal. There is a little hole for alignment. We won't forget about that. And the whole air motor is coming out. There's the inside of our aluminum housing. It actually looks pretty nice in there. There is a slot right there. I believe that may be for a, some type of alignment. I'm not entirely sure yet. I probably should have read the instructions. And there's our little vane motor outer area. There is an alignment peg on the other side. That's actually a nice... Uh, I think that's actually aluminum, to tell you the truth. It's really pretty lightweight. This is indeed a steel rotor. It is only four vanes. And then, of course, there's our rear bearing, which is actually... Uh, press fit where the front bearing is just a a regular fit so that kind of makes sense and now I'm realizing here with this ring is this is a lock ring once you screw this down and get it torqued properly this is a ring that really is meant to prevent this collar from rotating back and forth 
when you both screw this on as well as during operation of the ratchet and providing you a little bit of ability to be able to adjust it so that the head is actually pointing in the direction that you like. Here's our little alignment pit post. It's right there. That's what's going into this slot. So I like that. It actually is uh, effectively idiot proof. You, the only way this air motor properly goes back in here is if you get everything just right. And it's actually a pretty tight fit right there. So you do need to have that in, but it just slides right in there. No problem. And then we'll of course take our retention ring and it just sits on top like that. Our entire impact rec mechanism is a little easier to put on top, just sitting like that. And since this has all this spring tension on it, it's always kind of interesting to get it together. I think you may actually do it in reverse, such as putting this into here like so, then getting this into that same position. And it'll probably take some fiddling. Anyway, sorry for that poor explanation. You know, some of those things like with the impact mechanisms do get a little confusing for me. But uh, at least you got to see inside it. And you got to see some of the tricks of taking this apart. The real trick getting it assembled is trying to get this whole stack. Because this little top piece actually has to sit over the pins. And they get pushed down against that spring. And it's one of those situations where if you don't know the trick, it's just a nightmare trying to get it just right so you can get this collar to screw down. Otherwise, this collar won't go down. What I found out is that you un keep with the collar unscrewed, you get this little top portion until it actually is aligned with the pegs. And then this will actually fit through the hole. So you're actually sitting there holding it like this, pressing down with it all assembled and seated properly, pressing down on this. So you're kind of holding it by the bottom. You take the collar and you slide it over the top and there'll be just enough room for your fingers for you to continue to press as you slide the collar the rest of the way down, uh, manipulate it and actually get it threaded. And as soon as you get it in just about five turns, it actually captures it so you don't have to have this anymore. But you do need to use this rod to push it all together in order to get this collar properly installed. And then this collar just gets screwed down. And this flat out torque, not a ton of torque, but a bit of torque with the 29 millimeter. And actually, I believe that's most of what holds it together is this is being torqued on. You basically screw this all the way down, but not until it's tight. Then you thread this portion onto it and then you get it tight and then you back it off. So it's pointing the angle that you want. And then you actually loosen this knot a little bit. So it actually acts as a jam nut for the top portion. Everything that's holding the whole head of the ratchet into the body is just the raw torque of this collar here, which seems interesting. Anyway, I'm not going to make you suffer through the entire reassembly process because the rest of it's actually really straightforward and not complicated. It was just getting that impact mechanism apart. And I just wanted to show inside. There's just I was looking around and there just didn't seem to be any videos where somebody I think I found one video. But it uh, at least at the time I made this one. Uh, that they didn't fully go into just what it looks like in one of these impacting air ratchets. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.